The following video review is suitable for all ages. Viewers must acknowledge that they make purchasing decisions at their own risk. Look, I found Shira's sword. Look at it up close. Uh, I'm 90% sure Adora is Shira. Greetings, YouTube. I got hope. Tony the jerk face with a lovely lady in tow. Today we have Adora from Mattel's Discontinued Masters of the Universe Classics line. This was a collectible that I've been eager to find for years, despite knowing that she was immediately sold out back in 2010. 2010, people! How did I find her? She was seen at my local comic shop by sheer accident. One of my high school classmates happened to work there, I'll add. This was not cheap, but I figured that I deserved to splurge on occasion after being a good person this year, and for working extra days at convention gigs. Those who met me on YouTube can also vouch for me. If anyone asks, I first saw Ardor when I briefly watched an episode of the original She-Ra Princess of Power on VHS. I admit that I had a crush on the blonde lady who had an exquisite face and wore a red leotard swimsuit. Adora was one of the first female characters to teach me that women can be strong and beautiful. She also taught me to love other female characters wearing one-piece swimsuits. I did my best to pay tribute to Adora, as my recent fan art should show. Hope that viewers are satisfied. Before we meet Adora, let's look at her gear. She has her trademark jeweled sword that the character uses to become She-Ra, a silver painted blaster, and a belted holster for said blaster. To start off, the sword is painted silver and has a jewel-shaped clear blue plastic piece placed on both ends. The sword is sturdy enough, so try not to worry too much about plastic warping. What it also sells is that this sword is as screen accurate as you can get. The sword fits into Adora's right hand, like so, and also through the sculpted clip on her back. The tiny blaster and the holster also look good. The blaster looks as silvery as the sword, if not more so, and has some gold painted bits here and there. The camera might not show this well, but I colored the inside of the blaster barrel with a black rolling ball pen for added realism. With this pea shooter, I need to shoot some rebels. Uh, uh, pow, pow. Another Chad Warden reference. I went there. Anyway, shame that the barrel is slightly warped from being stuck in the holster for too long. The blaster fits into her left hand like so. Blaster can be shoved into the holster, of course. The black holster and the molded extra belt have some gold painted on. Holster is a peg on the end that connects one end of the belt to another, which lets you place that holster slightly above a door's hips. Since I'm wearing gloves, putting the holster on those hips and holstering the blaster can get tedious. Behold Princess Adora who stands approximately 7 inches. She almost fully resembles the cartoon character from the bottom to the top. She wears a separately sculpted red leotard with dark gold patterns on each side and small shoulder pads. Her black belt with the gold painted buckle, not the belted holster, is also sculpted in. Her forearms are covered by red gauntlets. Oh, didn't notice some loose paint on the right side of her chest. No harm done. The rest of her upper body and arms are painted white for the sleeved white turtleneck that she wore beneath her swimsuit. Maybe the turtleneck was another leotard that she wore underneath? Ain't my business. Sorry. Her bare and curvy legs only wear red boots with red-orange cups. As a boot lover myself, since I wear black tactical boots, judge if you wish, I say that Adora has good taste in footwear. I wasn't kidding about Adora's face, which looks exquisite here. She has sharp light blue eyes, slightly pronounced cheekbones, a petite nose, and full pouting lips. She almost seems to smile depending on which angle you see her face. That being said, note that this figure's face doesn't fully resemble the character's actual face seen here. Perhaps the makers of this figure, Four Horsemen Studios, wanted the face to look more realistic than cartoony. The added sculpted strands in her hair might support that theory. Before looking at the articulation, I must tell viewers that Adora does not completely look like this right out of the box. Here are promotional photos from when Adora was first released in 2010. Her bottoms looked much longer to cover her hip joints, but that caused fans to complain about the figure looking like she was wearing granny panties. Using the scissor attachment on a pocket knife and an X-Acto knife, I trimmed Adora's leotard for the bottom half to, well, look like a leotard. There were compromises, of course. 
These trims exposed her hip joints and left open gaps between the legs and the figure. Plus, I feel that my cuts weren't completely clean. Given that the figure was from an older design that didn't always hide joints, this is a consequence that I must live with. To those watching, if you plan on making these trims with your Masters of the Universe figures, take proper precautions and work slowly in a quiet environment away from crowds and distractions. Wear gloves and or goggles if you have to. In the end, you make these trims at your own risk. On to articulation. Head is on a ball joint, but movement is hindered by her voluminous blonde hair. That also prevents her from looking up. Arms swivel forward and backward. Shoulders swivel in and out, very easily and smoothly. Biceps swivel tightly, though. Thankfully, they aren't too tight, so you won't risk breaking them. Single jointed elbow hinge. Wrist swivel, but no hinge. Her waist also swivels and rocks back and forth, apparently. But the bottom half of her leotard doesn't rotate with her waist. So you might as well disregard that waist joint entirely. Since this figures from an older design, the hips have hinges and swivels instead of ball joints. Her knees are single jointed instead of double jointed. Again, older design. Almost forgot to show Adora's thigh swivel. She has a calf swivel. Tight swivels though. The ankle is posable through two separate hinges. The first swivels her ankle forward and backward. The second swivels her ankle left and right. For size comparisons, Adora standing alongside two ladies from the Magic the Gathering franchise, Chandra Nalar on the viewer's left and Liliana Vess on the viewer's right. Adora dwarfs each of them. She was considered quite tall in the cartoon, I believe. Next, Adora standing with 8-inch Kratos from 2018's God of War. Finally, she's standing with fellow blondie 12-inch Marvel Legends Thor, because why not? Is Adora recommended? If you're a fan of 80s cartoons and have extra cash to spend on fan merchandise that's still hard to find, go find her by all means. Just not from me. Note that the odds of seeing her on a shelf are slim to none. I was just lucky that Friday afternoon. Friday the 13th, to be precise. Again, remember that this figure was made before double-jointed knees became common among other figures, so forgive the limited articulation. This has been my review of Masters of the Universe Classics Adora. I'm Tony the Chang, also known as Tony Creator on DeviantArt. Feel free to comment if possible, and also feel free to visit my DeviantArt page. Link in the description as usual. Thanks again for watching. Doje